Good morning, guys. How are you guys doing? Okay. <clears throat> All right. How's everyone at home? Hope you guys are doing good. Please make sure you always follow NCDC's safety precautions. Okay. All right. Um, continue from the last video, which happened to be before, where we talked about citizenship, who a citizen is, ways of acquiring citizenship, and also ways um, that is requirements for um, citizenship. Okay, now from there, this video is going to be for week five and week six, where we we'll talk about citizen proper and also rights of a citizen. Okay, let's go through our um, learning objective. That is what we are expected to learn. Okay, at the end of the lesson, the student should be able to one explain ways of losing citizenship. That is. Even if you've acquired, you, you were able to go through all the steps. So how, what can make you lose those citizenship? Then number two, divine fund, uh, the fundamental human right. Three, I like the duties and obligation of a citizen in a state. And four, explain the ways of ways by which a citizen's rights can be safeguarded. And number five, I like the limitations to a citizen's rights. Then number six, which happened to which I know you guys know already, differences between a citizen and a non-citizen. Okay, moving on, ways of losing citizenship. That is, even having gone through all the processes of becoming a naturalized citizen. Now, as being a citizen through naturalization, you can still lose the citizenship if care is not taken. So these are the ways of losing citizenship. Number one, there is true disloyalty. A naturalized citizen can lose his or her citizenship if his activities are prejudicial and is causing harm to the country's corporate existence. That is, if you are no more loyal to the, to, the, to the state and whatever you're doing, your activities is causing harm to the, to the country's existence or um, whatever you're doing, is actually pulling down the, the nation. Such person may lose his or her citizenship. Then we, move, we move to number two, support another country. That is, if a citizen is found supporting another country engaged in war with his country, his, his citizenship may be deprived. That is, if they're acting as a, a spy, or let's say, for example, um, Nigeria and um, Iran are into war, and um, as a Nigerian, you are not supporting Iran over Nigeria. Such person could and may leave, uh, lose his or her citizenship. Then another one is that imprisonment. The individual can also lose his citizenship if within a period of a uh, period of five to seven years after becoming naturalized citizen, he gets involved in a criminal case, resulting um, in resulting in his imprisonment for some years. Such person will lose his uh, citizen that is having becoming a citizen that is between the time of five years to seven years that you've gotten the citizenship approval or the passport so and you you know some sort of person get involved in a criminal case and that that resulted in, in imprisonment and you know for some years such person can lose his uh, citizenship another one is forced declaration if there is a fundamental breach of the citizenship agreement by him that is false declaration, if such person is actually making another declaration aside from that is out of the agreement that made with him, such person may lose his or her citizenship. Okay, moving on, we have, um, sorry, we have treason, that is the naturalized citizen can equally lose his or her citizenship if found guilty of in this offense, treason. And treason is the crime of betraying one's own country. Betraying one's own country can cause one losing his or her own um, citizenship. That is, if you are betraying your country to another country, like that one I said the other or, uh, the, um, uh, before now, that you defend another country, or either you are a spy of another country, um, to your own country, that is, maybe you happen to be a spy, Iranian spy, or another country spy, 
in order to be telling them what is going on in, in your own country. Such person can lose his or her citizenship. Sorry, do we also have um, dual citizenship? If he has not renounced the citizenship of his original country, you know, normally after having um, one of the steps or um, procedure is that you need to, you would have to renounce your previous citizenship before the new uh, country can give him um, a new passport to show that he are now a citizen of such country. Another one is renouncement. He either can lose his uh, citizenship by verbally renouncing it. So you can, you know, you can decide to renounce your country that you are no more, you don't want to be a member of such country again, by announcing it, you are no more a citizen of that country because that Baba declaration will be recorded and will be kept for, um, uh, for or as evidence. Okay, moving on from there to right of a citizen. Right of a citizen. You know, when we want to talk about right of a citizen, we're actually talking about fundamental human rights. And what is fundamental human rights? Fundamental human rights can be defined as those natural rights and privileges enjoyed by the citizens of a given state, which are usually stated in the constitution of the country. That is, every member, uh, citizen of a country has some, nat um, some privileges, which are referred to as natural rights, which is being given to every citizen. And this um, fundamental human right is being stated in the constitution. For example, Nigeria has it in chapter four of the constitution. If you can lay your hands upon um, Nigeria constitution, you, you just go to chapter four, you see the head of fundamental human right there and you see all the listed fundamental human right there. This means that every individual at birth is endowed with certain rights. That is, the result of uh, fundamental human rights, all of us are endowed with certain rights being born in that particular country, which are, for example, um, right to life, right to liberty, and the pursue, uh, right to pursuit of happiness. Most of these rights are recognized and entrenched in the Constitution. When we talk about entrenched, we mean it's being written in the Constitution of most countries. Therefore, it is, it is the responsibility of the state to ensure that its citizens enjoy this right. Now, I want to assume every one of you has gotten constitution right now, and um, also, or rather, if you cannot get the anti constitution like this one, like this one that we have here, Nigerian constitution, I'll be showing you this in the class, and I'm going to show you a picture of the front page very soon. So you can open to chapter four and you see all these rights there, and that all these uh, fundamental, I have some of them here. That the rights include the right to life, security, and protection of law and access to the court of law. We have it there. Number two, we have freedom and protection from slavery and for or and forced labor. Number three, we have um, right to ownership of property and protection from deprivation of property. And this the first one that talks about that you have right to life because you know it is God gives you this, it's God given. Nobody can get take your life and you have right to security and protection of law and access to God. That's why you see one of the major functions of any government is to, uh, for, to secure life and pro, uh, properties of the citizen. And second one, the freedom and protection from slavery and forced labor is now, it has become a law that, um, you know, you cannot um, force anybody into labor and you cannot put anybody to slavery. You know, it is not acceptable again. Then the third one, the right to ownership of property. That is, you can acquire any property that you like, that you can, your money can actually acquire, and protection from the deprivation of such property, because such property, will be, the document will be written on, on, on your name, and um, it becomes your own. You have the right to buy anything that, that you want. The fourth one there says, the right to vote and be voted for in any political, um, election. As a, as, a, as a Nigerian, once you are age 18, you can vote for anybody that you want. You can vote in any, any political election, or rather, you can be voted for. That is, you can contest for any election. At least for a councillorship, you have a certificate, you can 
contest for primary six. I'm uh, sorry, you can contest for counselorship in your community. So as a of that, you can vote from age 18 above um, upward, you can vote, and you can be also you can also be voted for. Number five, freedom of forming and joining any political association or religion. That is, as a citizen, you have right to form any association, you form any religious association, or join any political association of your choice, or um, choose any religion of your choice. That is why I see these are politicians, uh, politicians. They switch from one polit uh, political party to another. You see them in P um, PDP today. Tomorrow, you, see, you just hear that they, they uh, you know, they cross over to APC. From APC, they cross to APP. From APP, they cross to NDP. From NDP, they cross to Accord. Like that, like that. So because there is freedom of joining any political association or religion. So like. Of the Christians also, or and the Muslim, you can switch from being Muslim to be a Christian. You can also move um, from being a Christian to a Muslim. That is your choice. And number six, you have freedom of movement. That is why we have movement. That is why we can you cannot be arrested for walking on the road. And then number seven, right to education. Okay. Then uh, that is uh, that is reason why the education sector is one of the most important sector in Nigeria because it is part of our right as a citizen. But hate freedom from unlawful detention, arrest, and such of, you know, we have freedom from unlawful detention. If we are, you are being detained unlawfully, you can sue such person or that particular um, law agency. You know, you are also free from, you know, unlawful arrest and unlawful torture. Such person can be arrested and be sued to no, if your your right is being deprived of you. They also have freedom of expression and of the press. That is why we can actually make our opinion. You know, you see a lot of people talking in the press, a lot of people talking on, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, and many more like that. So it's because they have freedom of expression whereby you can criticize the government, you can talk about any kind of thing that you feel like talking about because you have freedom of expression and they have the same thing as freedom of speech. Then number 10, that we have right to a fair hearing. That is, you have been taken to the court of law. You have right to fair hearing. That is, the judge need to listen to your own side of the story. You shouldn't just judge a case based on the other party's judge, um, um, you know, statement. The, you have fair hearing. You have right to even, you know, say what you, are, you have, uh, you know, your own experience about the case. Then number 11, freedom of conscience and of religion. So you have freedom to your conscience and freedom to choose any religion of your choice. So all this are in chapter four of the 1999 constitution, even if they amended when it's still in chapter four, I said, I'm gonna show you, I'm, I'll be showing you the picture of uh, the 1999 constitution. We have it here. So make sure you get hold of one. If you can't get a physical one, um, download it online. It's there, just type, 1999, or just write 1999 Nigerian Constitution. You see 1999 Constitution there, you can download it, go to chapter four, you see there the fundamental human rights. Okay? All right, we have, let's move from there to the next subtopic. Then now, the duties and obligation of a citizen. And you know, in the in the last video, I when we talk about who is a citizen, we said uh, such person owes you know, um, allegiance to the duties and obligation of the citizen. And that is the, 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 the um, what is it called? The government of such country owes, or should I say the citizen owes the government some certain duties and responsibilities. And we, that's where we are right now. The following are some of the duties of a citizen in a state, or rather the duties and obligations of a citizen to a state. Let me just start. What this means is that as a citizen, the government has given you the fundamental human right. That is your right, which is being given to you by the government. Now, as a citizen, you also have something to give back to the government, which is expected of you. As a responsible citizen, you are you need to um, um, oblige to all these the, next, the following um, duties and obligations. The first one that a citizen should pay his taxes regularly. We talk about tax. We talk about uh, water bill. The, um, you know, you know, normal uh, tax. We have the, um, you know, 
PSM bill and many other bills. Any bill, and if anything you know you use that that is being charged for, you are expected to pay for it as a citizen. Then another one there is that citizens should obey all the laws of the state. It's the spirit of every citizen to obey, obey all laws and order because by not obeying it, you are going against the constitution. Okay, number three there says a citizen must vote during election. It is expected of every citizen to vote during an election. Once you are up to age 18, you know, you, you register by, um, um, you know, by collecting the voter's card, and when it's time for election, you go out to vote for the leader of your choice. By there, that tells you that your voice is being heard. Then from there, we have uh, we also have uh, a good citizen should always assist the law enforcement agencies in detecting and preventing crime in the community. It is very necessary. You know that's why they always say that security is conscious. By being alert, we should be conscious of our environment. When you see any um uh on um you know irregular or abnormal movement of people in your environment, just call the um the law enforcement agency in order to you know perform their role of protecting people's life and property. So you can help and or assist the law enforcement agencies. You know, in order to detect and prevent crime, society we note, note that okay, the particular crime that is being that occurred in the particular place, and you know those that you know that you can call police, so they give the police the information so that such people can be arrested. Another duty and obligation of a citizen in the state is that a good citizen should not interfere with the rights of another citizen. That is as you as a citizen and me as a citizen we shouldn't interfere each other's right as a citizen as a citizen for example you know people when you kill somebody you interfere with the person's um right as a citizen so and the law will not stand in place by and there's a section you check this the chapter four of the fundamental rights they you know they they they, they explain it one by one check um the, the subsection type three there you see that it's been explained that anyone who kills, who, take, who, who takes another person's life, such person's life will also be taken, and many more like that. So it is your duty and obligation to fulfill all this. Another duty and obligation is that a good citizen should show respect for national symbols. What are the national symbols that we're talking about? Talking about the flag, the anthem, the, 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 the money that's in the Naira, um, the coat of arm, the flag, and many more like that. So all these are national symbols that we have to pay respect to them. That is why when you see flag of Nigeria, you are expected to salute. That is how the, the military men, uh, how they do. And likewise, in your school, you can see in our school here, God Force College, whenever um, the national anthem is going on, it's expected of everyone of you to be on attention or be as still, just stand still and keep on reading the, um, the national anthem. That is doing that, you are showing respect to the national anthem. You are also uh, showing respect to your country and uh, the national symbols, okay? And we also have that a good citizen should obey the call to service, um, to serve his country through the National Youth Service Corps. You know, this is, is the program that is being put in place for integration of Nigerian youth, that is those who have gone to school and, and, and now graduate, it is a compulsory course for them to take, which every Nigerian graduate should, uh, is expected to go for the National Youth Service Corps in order to serve the country for one year. And it is a must for the citizen to do so. Then the, the next one is that a uh, good citizen must show loyalty to his country and must not support another country against his own country. You know, we said that before, loyalty to your country is very, very important. And if you're being caught supporting that country against your own country, such person's citizenship will be deprived of, and um, such person will be, will, 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 be, will be jailed or sent away from such country. Another one is that a good citizen will protect the public properties. When we talk about public properties, we're talking about the social amenities. 
talk about the government building, talk about the, 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 the water bill, that, that, um, that is water corporation, you know, you vandalizing it, you are destroying the, the public uh, property, uh, talk about the, any public property, it is the expected of us to protect them. It is our duty. And because those properties are actually working, they have been put in place for us. Maybe you vandalizing the road, you know, you know, spoiling or damaging the 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 the, the, the fuel pump or damaging the, the, the sorry the fuel pipe or the water pipe and many other other things is gonna affect us. So that is the reason why we need to protect the public properties. And the last one there is that a good citizen must observe environmental sanitation regularly for a clean society. Thanks, thanks to the Lagos State Government because they've been put, they, they, they have been helping us, you know, they've been helping us in a lot of ways in order to abide with these uh, duties and uh, obligations that they've given us. You can see, I think uh, for every first Saturday is for environmental. You stay at home and clean your house, clean your environment. So it is expected, it is a, it is a failure of every citizen to observe environmental sanitation because uh, you need to have the clean environment because cleanliness um, is next to godliness and to have um, uh, a reputable environment that is free of diseases we need to um, uh, observe environmental sanitation so um, that will take us to the last subtopic which is um, uh, ways by which citizens' rights can be safeguarded. Again, ways by which citizens' rights can be safeguarded. Number one there, you know, is law. Citizens' rights can be safeguarded by, um, through law as a result of, um, you know, supremacy and existence of law to maintain the rights of individuals and their corresponding obligation as a citizen you know the the you know we are talking about ways by which a citizen's right can be safeguarded is being our rights has been put you know it has been enacted when we say the law is being enacted I mean, it has been it has become law that is why we have it in chapter four of the nigerian constitution uh, taking the heading of fundamental human rights then that one there is independent judiciary judges must be fair and impartial in protecting individuals rights against invasion by private individuals of government that is if the, there is independent judiciary that is the judges can actually educate freely without without fear or impartial in pro protecting individuals right you know as so that they should be impartial and they should be fair to their job as a result of that our rights can be safeguarded now now in democracy democracy is modern political system which permits free discussion and free association so is democracy is decided that nigeria is practicing um democracy that is one of the reasons why we have um this fundamental human rights enacted in our strength in our constitution another ways is um ways entrenchment that is fundamental human rights should be entrenched in the constitution of the land thank god we have it has been entrenched in our own constitution here, Nigeria. So we are, our right is being, we know we are, we are so sure our right is being safeguarded. And then enlightenment programs, this program will help in um, educating the citizens to be conscious of their rights and defend this. In the sense that, you know, when the government set up enlightenment program for the citizens, in order for the citizens for to be aware of their right. And as, once you know your right, to be able to claim it, um, declare it and also defend it. Let's move on to the next one. We have free press, that is freedom of press, which should be guaranteed. Thank God, it's been guaranteed in Nigeria. This will make them right on national issues objectively. Yes, so we have this also because it's one of the ways of which our rights can be, you know, be protected. And uh, having a free freedom of press, whereby we can attack any. Uh, criticize any government, either positive or negatively, without being taken up or being arrested. Because we are, it is part of public opinion. We are making our opinion about such government. The re reduction of poverty level, 
there should be a drastic reduction of poverty level in the society. You know, the government needs need to also, you know, they've been working on this, but we need to also work more. So reduction of poverty level also is a way of safeguarding citizens' rights. Rule of law, rule of law should be, should be, uh, should apply that is those in government should govern the people according to the provision of the constitution and also the citizens have to obey the laws of the land as well as respect the constitution so the government themselves should you know should not be above the law uh, rather they should um, rule, uh, govern the people according to the provision of the constitution likewise we the citizen on the other hand should obey obey the laws of the land and as well as you know, respect the constitution. Then we also have another one way here, pressure group. The system should also accommodate pressure groups like MBA, NMA, UT, NIJ, it is MBA Nigeria Bar Association that is for lawyers and Nigeria Medical Association that is for med med and med uh, in line, and UT Nigeria Union of Teachers, NIJ, Nigeria um, Institute of Journalism. So for all these institutions you know, can come, come together and as a result of that, you know, you know, to defend one another. And as a result of that, our rights can be safeguarded. Then free legal aid, free legal aid for the less privileged to be in place and not to be ignored. This is one thing that we also we still need because this country, a lot of things are happening that you need to sue so those people or those organizations or those governments themselves but due to the fact that there's no free legal aid. So if government put in place free legal aid, as of that, the less privileged, those that cannot uh, afford you know, a lawyer will be able to take this free legal aid and be able to you know, uh, defend themselves and their rights will be you know, retained for them. Now, then we'll go to the limitations to the citizens' rights. As to tell you that um, some rights as limitations is not all rights. That is, uh, that is just there, that will be there for life, but there are some lights, right, that has limitation based on one thing or the other. Like the first one is slander or liberal. A citizen, a citizen has no right to slander or liberal other citizens. This is a limitation to freedom of expression. That is, you know, when we're talking about slander, we're talking about, you know, you, you, you giving, um, you know, not giving people the opportunity to, to say their opinion or to express themselves, it is a limitation of human rights. Another one is conviction. A citizen who is convicted and imprisoned may lose his voting rights and move freedom of movement while in prison. And you know, you, that you went ahead to you know, commit crime that leads you to the prison. And as a result of that, you've been in prison, you cannot vote, even if it is time to, for voting. So your, your, your right of to vote and vote for is being deprived already and you don't have freedom of movement so that is not is not being placed by government but it is you placed on yourself due to the fact that such person has committed a crime then trespass a citizen has no right to trespass into another person's property this is a limitation to freedom of movement also then emergency period government may restrict citizens movement during emergency that is for example, the current one that we're having right now, um, COVID-19 pandemic, the yes, government placed um, uh, um, the on hold that there is no freedom of movement for the citizens due to the fact that because you know, their function is to, they are meant to pro protect us as a citizen. So they don't want us to, you know, to, to be infected with COVID-19. So they have us to stay back at home for a few weeks so that, um, you know, um, will not, you know, our life will not be taken or will not contact the diseases, the disease. And as a result of it, our freedom of movement was deprived of. And so you remember some times ago when we, we started having a uh, 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 issue, those, there are some particular states talk about Bono, Adamawa and some states like that. Those who live in such states, they have studied, those states were placed on um, um, emergency, state of emergency, whereby those who go in there cannot move freely on their own until, um, you know, when the government make another proclamation or declaration that, uh, yes, uh, they should, you know, so as a result of emergency, during emergency period, people cannot 
um, people's uh, freedom of movement is being restricted and is being limited during that time. Now, another one is um, uh, property. Citizens may deny the right to own some property. Is each, for example, weapons of some category. You know, can imagine a normal citizen who wants to get, you know, um, you know, some kind of, you know, let's say nuclear bomb. Well, what, what do you want to use it for? Or bomb on, on those big and um, you know, weapon like ammunition and all. What do you want to use it for? So government might deny such person from owning such property because it is not for a good use. Moving on from there, we have state security. Citizens may not be allowed to join secret society or associations if they threaten the state security. And this also is a limitation to freedom of association. And I'm very sure that no one can actually come out you in, like a member of secret society or court, is called, court group can come out to say, yes, I'm a court member. Though we have freedom to join association society, but if such society, you know, um, threaten the state security, as well of that, they can, their freedom of association can be deprived of them. And now it's property for public use. Government may acquire some individual's property for public use that may be land, uh, but you know, sometimes, most of the time, it's always with compensation. So government cannot just take your land without compensating you, except if the land actually belongs to the government. So government may actually have a particular you know, structure which they want that part, they want that how that uh, want that place to look like, or they want to be there. So as well that such land can be taken and be paid for. That is so. As that is another, uh, you know, um, you know, um, you know, depriving of uh, right to own property. Another one is citizens may be deprived of their lives. This could happen if they take another person's life and are condemned by law. And it's like what I said the other time: the right to life. We have right to life, but you don't have right to kill another person. So if you kill another person after you know taking the uh, the case has been taken to the court, you know, looking at the reasons why would that happen, except if it is for self defense, then such person will be given some jail time that that is number of years in, uh, to, to to spend in prison. But if it's actually you know not in the right way, or the, so such person's life can be taken because such person such person has taken another person's life. And is being condemned by law. The another one is type of government. Type of government in power may limit citizens' rights. So that depends on the kind of government such country is practicing. If a such country is practicing one party system, you know, whatever they say, that is the final. Or a military government. Military government, you don't have right to speech, you don't have right to movement. You know, most of this there is no there is no constitution, and if there is no constitution, there is no fundamental. Human rights. So all majority of the rights are being deprived of. Okay, let that will take us to the next of topic, topic, which is the differences between a citizen and non-citizen. Again, differences between citizen and non-citizen. We teach this in first time. We are teaching it again, so make sure you listen attentively. First, when a citizen, a non-citizen is not a legal member of the state, whereas a citizen is a legal member of a state with full constitutional rights. That is, a citizen of a state has, um, has a, legal, um, a legal constitutional right. That is, as a result of this, they have constitutional rights, being a citizen. Number two, a non-citizen does not owe any duty or obligation to the state. That is, someone who is an alien is not compulsory for such person to perform the, next, the duties, obligations, to, towards the state, but a citizen owes the um, duties and obligations to the state. So it is necessary and important for the citizen to perform all the necessary duties and obligations to the state. Number three, there we have a citizen can serve his country in any capacity, while a non citizen cannot. A non citizen cannot serve his country, the, 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 the resident country. Um, and, um, in any capacity, but a citizen can serve his own country at any capacity. And then number four there, a citizen must be ready to defend his country when called upon to do so. That is, 
like or maybe you are you are you have to call upon to defend your country maybe against a particular country waging war towards your country but a non-citizen cannot not be called upon again another one there number five a citizen must show loyalty to the state while a non-citizen may not so while it is composite for a citizen to show loyalty to his own state or country but a non-citizen may not show loyalty Number six, a non-citizen cannot vote or be voted for in any political election, um, but a citizen can vote and be voted for. It is not possible. When you are not a citizen of the country, you, know, you cannot vote until you become a naturalized citizen of such a country. That's where you can vote and be voted for. Number six, seven, then, a citizen can take up any job of his choice in area in areas of job selection, but a non-citizen cannot. Yes, if that is true, because when you are a citizen of the country, you can actually pick any job of your choice, you know, on your selection, but a non-citizen cannot. And I have number eight there says that the rights um, the right of the citizen are guaranteed, while the that of the non-citizen is not is even the non-citizen does not have any right in such country. Number eight, the right of a citizen is fully under the protection of the state, but that of the non-citizen is not. So if a citizen has a right in the state and is being pro are protected by the law, and, um, but um, non-citizen does not have any right at all, such person does not even have any protection under the state. So that's why the last one there talks about life of the citizen is fully under protection of the state, but that of non-citizen is not. So thank you, my name is Mr. Falade. Um, until I, I'm going to expect every one of you to go through this video again and again, the long one, but don't bother. Just try to, you know, watch it over again, over and over again. We combine, uh, combine with your notes so that you can have better understanding. So till I come your way again, my name is Mr. Falade. See you next week. Bye.